Alfred and welcome to another episode of the Brew Quest. Today's beer style is Fruit Lambic with Lindemann's Frambois as the style example. Now Frambois is Raspberry Lambic beer and this is going to be in the wild slash sour, sour ale category on the craftbeer.com website. And I'm kind of excited to do this because I've been putting off sours, at least the traditional sours, and trying out kettle sours like you've seen in the uh, the banana daiquiri, the pie hard two kettle cooler. I've had other sours on uh, on the side quest, but I haven't had the traditional sours except for that contemporary goza by Avery that I did. I think it was called El Goza, right? Yeah, that's the last traditional sour I had, and I've been meaning to break in to this category to try out more sour beers. So today we're doing Belgian fruited lambic and I was trying to find an American craft brewery that does fruited lambic, but I couldn't find one anywhere else that's American. I found an American lambic beer, which I will save for the lambic, the regular lambic episode of the brew quest, but I can only find Belgian fruited lambics. So I couldn't do Belgian style, I just have to do Belgian lambics. This beer, while they don't have an ABV on this bottle, I believe it's something like around 4%. Uh, it's raspberry. I love raspberries. They use the raspberries all the time, like in toast and peanut butter and uh, jam sandwiches. Those are great. Lindemann's, it looks like it was established in 1822. It has a nice little description on the back. Lindemann's Frambois, lambic made from local barley, unmalted wheat, raspberry juice, aged hops, and wild airborne yeast, quote unquote, spontaneous fermentation. True lambics are rare. All come from one of fewer than a dozen breweries in Belgium's Seine River Valley, a region about 15 by 75 miles in size. Lindemann's Brewery, family owned since 1822. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I know Lambic, like in order to call your, your beer Lambic, it actually has to come from that region in Belgium. It's sort of like Champagne, it's sort of like uh, Koch, which we did. Uh, in order to call, call your beer a Koch, it has to come from the area around Köln. And yeah, I'm actually pretty excited to get into this bottle. But before I pour this out, uh, let's read a little bit of the history of Fruited Lambic from the BJCP. And the BJCP uh, writes down, Spontaneously fermented wild ales from the area in and around Brussels, the Seine Valley, stem from a farmhouse brewing and blending tradition several centuries old. The number of producers is constantly dwindling and some are untraditionally sweetening their products post-fermentation with sugar or sweet fruit to make them more palatable to a wider audience. Fruit was traditionally added to lambic or goose either by the blender or publican to increase the variety of beers available in local cafes. I'm guessing this is going to be kind of sweet, slightly sweet, uh, nice light beer, I think it's only 4% ish. Uh, so let's open this up and uh, let's try this out. I want to drink some more sours. I'll see you right after this. This beer has a cork on top of, or right underneath a bottle cap. So that was the first time I've ever actually had to use a, a corkscrew for a beer. I'm guessing uh, the foiled top should have gave it away, but that was, a, that was the first time. So pretty good, pretty interesting pour. The head was pretty big, kind of goes away pretty quick, but it's like this nice pink color. Oh, well, there's a little bit of cork in my beer though. It's my fault. I didn't know how deep these things go. I was just gauging it based on how um, long wine corks are. Uh, but anyway, yeah, nice pink, 
nice red body. Almost looks like, like a wine, like a light wine almost. But it, this is very, very dark, very opaque, can't see through it. You can definitely see the CO2 rising, a lot of nice fast bubbles. It looks really interesting. So let's get a nose on this. It smells less like a beer, more like fermented juice. And when I say fermented juice, it doesn't smell like completely raspberry juice. It smells like like a sweet wine almost. Yeah, like a sweeter, sweeter version of wine, more juice than like more juice than ferment, fermented wine. If you know what I mean. Like it just smells like there's more juice to wine, like more juice to fermented ratio in, in this beer. So now that we smelled it, uh, let's taste it. Cheers. Definitely sour and definitely sweet, definitely juicy. A lot of carbonation, like you get that fizzle on your tongue, almost like a soda, like you're drinking a soda. And it definitely tastes light, so I think if this is uh, 4%, you actually know what, let's check this out. Oh, this is actually a lot lower according to uh, Untapped. This is 2.5%. It doesn't, it can barely taste any of the alcohol. Uh, so yeah, uh, this tastes great, actually. Really digging it. And where would I put it? It's definitely gonna be high. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, okay. Now, just tasting this makes me definitely wanna try everything else fruited. I uh, know there's cherry, there's a peach one, I think. I wonder if there's any more. Let me see if I can find more. I definitely want another another bottle of this. Uh, I think this was kind of inexpensive compared to the other Lambics out there, but hopefully I can find something comparable besides raspberry. Maybe cherry, I'll try cherry next. But yeah, this is definitely gonna be high. Uh, my last sour that I had was the Contemporary Goza. And would I put this up there with the Barrel Aged Imperial, which is number five, the Belgian style wit, American Wheat Beer, American Cream Ale, English Style Sweet Style. I'm gonna put this as number six. I'm getting rid of the Goza. And as much as I like this, this is just sort of like a nice low ABV uh, drink, a low ABV beer that definitely tastes not like beer at all. It tastes like juice, like, like a soda almost, like a raspberry soda. And it's good, but I don't know whether or not I, I will take this over. So the way I'm basing it is I have English style sweet stout, American cream ale, American wheat beer, Belgian style wit, and a barrel aged imperial stout, and this raspberry or fruited lambic beer. If I had all six of those to choose from, which one am I gonna pick? Definitely gonna go with that sweet stout first. And I think this list kind of encompasses exactly how my choice would be. I don't think I'd pick up a barrel aged Imperial Stout over this. Oh no, I'm sorry. I definitely would pick a barrel aged Imperial Stout because of all the qualities that go into that beer. This is still a good beer and it's definitely better than that Goza. Oh my gosh, man. I like this definitely more than I like that Goza even though that Goza was a little bit more higher, higher ABV. I'm gonna give it to Fruited Lambic. So Fruited Lambic is gonna come at number six and I just can't wait to try out other stuff. I've, I've seen other Belgian Fruited Lambics and the reason I picked uh, Brouwer Y Lindemann's is because it was the cheapest. I think this bottle was only like $6, I think. Something like that. So coming in at number six, Fruit Alambics. I really like this beer, this is actually really good. But thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. It's almost like a raspberry soda.